Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. Joining me today is Silver Quill. And I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> but anywho, um, we're just going to continue on from last week's uh, review. Uh, issue 89 and 80... Sorry, 90 of French Service Magic. Um, the version show or something like that. So yeah, uh, we're going to continue with season 10, episode 3 and 4. The conclusion for... Uh, what was the comic called again? Uh, the Frisian Shores. Alrighty then. So, now let's dilly dilly and hop right into it. We are greeted to a flashback of Zakura when she was a kid. In her hooves is the character chart for her friend's LARPing. Zakura's a LARPer! <laughs> too magic, too magic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the scenario here is this. Her party is going to cross a desert and she asks, what do they do? And <laughs> um, uh, Mirari just says, I'm the leader, so people should listen to me. And does Devil? Does Devil, was it? Yes, does Devil. All right, does Devil steals everybody's item and gives it to the poor. How very robinish Um Chris? No, uh, Brooke. Brooke is a barbarian and wants to destroy stuff. And let's just say that the party died. TPK. <laughs> so, Zakura just reminisced her memory of the walking through the desert with uh, Mirari. And yeah, with that in mind, that's very dangerous. Like, they might not survive. Oh no! <laughs> When they reach a cavern, Rockhoof here says, Fearless leader Applejack, I know this is a foreign land and I am from a distant time, but given my experience in the ways of digging of such, I would wager a guess that this is a hole, a large one at that. And Applejack gives Rockhoof this glaring stare of, No crap, Sherlock. <clears throat> so, anywho, with that, Applejack just says, Guys, you got any idea? You got any suggestions, Mirari? And Mirari just says, Like, Rose, you can talk to plants, right? So why don't you ask them and stuff? So, Tempest just looks and says, Wait, what? She's talking to plants? That, that's not going to work. That, that's just dumb. That's just stupid. And Rose comes in saying, Oh, um, if we go north, there's a bridge that goes across. And Tempest just says, wait, what? We're seriously going to believe this. Like, seriously, we're going to believe this. And everybody just agrees. Like, okay, we're going to die. And uh, Crystal likes her. And she says, I think I like you. We should be friends. Tempest just says, nah, friendship is not my thing. Perfect, we should be pen pals that never write, but uh, we could if we wanted to. <laughs> and Tempo just says, I wouldn't hate that. <laughs> oh my god. As they continue on going to the bridge, they notice a bird. Oh, it's a large bird. It's a rook. And she's blocking passage to go across the bridge. The bridge is there, so that's good news. And Tempest is ready to throw down. But... Dust Devil just stops her and says, uh, I got this. And well, he goes up to the rook and asks, like, why are you rocking the bridge? And nicely asks, like, maybe you could help each other. I mean, I, I bet you could choose a better way to do stuff and stuff. And she explains that she was flying, landed for food, and then she's too heavy to get to the air currents and she's stuck here and she couldn't go home to her family. So, that, that's a sad story. Aww. And Tempest is just like, oh, why am I even here? Ah. <laughs> Dust Devil here f decides like, okay, I can help you, I can help you. I, I, I think I know the trick. And the Rook was very excited. So, I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? I think that the flashback to the role-playing is probably 
the biggest characterization we get for Zakura's friends. Marini stands out as she's been the, the most vocal, and Crystal unfortunately stood out because she was the most hostile. But by and large, you get to know these characters as a group, a group identity over individuals. So this role-playing and seeing how they behave in that, that's the most focus I think they get as individuals. Now, the funny thing is that the, the rock, it's a rock rock. We've seen a, a flesh and feathers rock in uh, the Moltdown, taking Sakura and Rarity in its talons. But th this is apparently part of the uh, literalist genus. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. Yes, I, I guarantee that. Makes me wonder how it gets airborne at all. It's made of rocks. Silver. We fly in things called aeroplane and they are made of metal. Yes, but they have jet engines pushing it at an absurd amount of speed and power. This thing flaps. S Unless Silver, it's farting. I, I, <laughs> oh. I was yeah. going to go there while you do. <laughs> I mean, that's my, that's my headcanon now. This thing is fart propelled. <laughs> Why did I... <laughs> Don't light a match. Don't light a match because it will just... It's right passing over. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with the impulse in this one. Why? <laughs> Why do I do what I do? Because I can. <laughs> so, anywho. Now, oh, and anything oops, sorry, that? one update. This is um not highly fixated in the story, but I, it was a, a point of pride for author Jeremy Wheatley. Dust Devil is non-binary. They identify mm -hmm. with the pronoun of they. That's very fascinating. It only really comes up just as Dust Devil is helping the rock, which we will explore forthwith. Ah, uh, all right. And uh, in all honesty, if you ask me Dust Devil's um, sexuality, I would just say he's male from j judging by his looks and whatnot. But they, okay, that's fascinating. So, anywho, uh, Dust Devil here takes a page from Flash and does the whole runaround. And he picks up speed that it's kind of lifting the rook up into the air. And he f runs really, really fast and decides, like, okay, uh, the rook is airborne, he's picking up. And it's kind of dangerous for him if he stops. Like, that, that's going to be a bad time for him. And realizing what's going to happen, uh, Crystal goes up to, or goes to where, uh, Dust is and creates a ice light for him to land safely. And yay! That's awesome. So Dust here managed to save the rook. And, uh, well, they can carry on with their adventure. Yay! Uh, I'm just going to skip on ahead. Um, if I miss anything, probably Silver will cover for me. Hey? Yes. I shall do my utmost. Alright. So, as they cross the desert, we see that the ponies here are very sweaty and hot and dehydrated. Except for Crystal. Sorry. Except for, uh, Brooke. It, it, she seems to be having a great time. <laughs> and, Crystal, on the other hand, is so dried up that she could go poof. They explain the situation is that because of what she did to help Dusty, that she ex she used up more of her water than she should have. And, well, oh man, I'm forgetting her, the cactus name. What was her name again? <laughs> uh, cactus Rose? Yes, Rose. So... Uh, Rose here. Oh, that's her name. <laughs> my bad. So anyway, uh, Rose here just says, uh, should I give my drinking water to her? And they say, no, no, no. Um, uh, because we, we need that for later. But you know, you could talk to the cat this and give her some water. So she does. And she comes back saying that they want a song and dance from the ponies. And <laughs> Tempest is just saying, no, 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 no. Inescapable. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Tempest here, sorry, uh, and Rebo, um, and Re Applejack here just says, damn it, I forgot my banjo. And I am going to 
press the fast forward button here because my issue with this is there's no audio. It's one of those cases where, oh god, this could be awesome, but there's no song or whatever. So I got no idea how is this. So yeah, as we reach the end of the song, or did we know? Yes, okay, as we reach the end of the song, uh, Sakura says that she's sorry to the group and, well, she shouldn't have left what she, like she did and uh, let's just say they all kiss and make up and they should be kissed. <laughs> oh, they are kissing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, with that, they get the water from the cactus and as they, well, kiss and make up, uh, they hear a rumble and it's the good slag. Oh no! So everybody runs away from it and they see a temple. The rest of the crew heads into the temple except for Tempest and uh, Rockhoof. Yes, except for Tempest and Rockhoof because they want to throw down. As they go into the temple, they see a shocking thing. Uh, well, at least for Applejack and Zakura, and they can't believe their eyes on what they see, and it's the Tree of Harmony. Like, wait, what? And I'm gonna pause here because, well, it's the end of the book. So, Silver, I I know I kind of jumped a lot and didn't really give you a chance to talk, but <laughs> sorry. Uh, what do you think? Well, no, I think you, I think you skipped what needed to be skipped. An issue with this issue is that it's. A song, but we have no music to go with. It's something like the Poniachi song way back in the Pinkie Pie Micro. Yeah, and I think I was the one that pointed you out, hey, Silver, there's a song for it done by somebody with vocals by Ellen Monty. Yes, but now I don't think anyone's tackled it this time. Our fandom is, is not at its, it's no longer at its peak. Might change in G5, we'll see. I hope so. People might forget that Andy Price also draws horror, Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, seeing Dust Devil falling with that, with, with their mouth all twisted up and <laughs> screaming, yeah, I can believe the horror. That was dang scary to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I mean, the tropes to DC or superhero comics here is all over the place. Like, you, you get to see the traditional, what, run around to create tornado and stuff. Like, that's pretty badass. I mean, uh, Dusty here is just running so fast. Like, <laughs> it's a good thing that he didn't break the sound barrier to travel through time. <laughs> when you mentioned Flash, I thought, wait, they're not they're not uh, impersonating Flash Sentry. Oh, oh, wrong, wrong <laughs> Flash, wrong Flash. <laughs> uh, should I say Pedro? Pedro. Yeah. Um, Quicksilver. Ah. Oh, Pietro. Oh, Pietro. Okay, my bad. But with the song. Visuals are going to carry the day. And so Andy Price, when he made all manner of uh, of references with Kiss mm-hmm. and Freddie Mercury and a couple other... I mean, it's fun just to see them so energetic. What it lacks in a musical backup, it, it has in visual expression. So I thoroughly enjoyed. But at the same time, too, it kind of turned me off because... When, when you know that, okay, there's a song, quote-unquote, there's a song, and the, uh, sorry, uh, there's a song, but you don't really insert a song. Like, you, you, it's just reading the lyrics to a song that you don't really hear or can't imagine. And you don't know what kind of song it is this. Is it pop? Is it rock? Is it indie? Or is it uh, metal? Screamo? I mean, you... Give it all. I mean, when you look at Mirari, she's really belting out her heart. I mean, that could be anything. I'm not very musically inclined. I wonder if someone more more in tune with their inner musician, pun intended, would uh, <laughs> would be able to fill in the music themselves. I don't know. I mean, I guess they can, but um, in all, in my honest opinion, looking at the uh, art and whatnot. I'm guessing this is a multiple style song with different styles in between tracks from your standard ballad to your uh, show show tunes and whatnot. I mean, it's there 
and ends up with a um, Bohemian Rhapsody style montage near the end. Is this the real life? Is this just <laughs> pony fantasy? Cut by a Groot slang. No escape from reality. <laughs> uh, not even going to uh, try that. <laughs> but still, uh, yes, uh, as we carry on, um, Silver Tree, what? Yes, Tree of Harmony. Hey, what, what, what? Huh, what? And I, I have to be honest with you, when I saw that, I had goosebumps. And just like, wait, what? <laughs> Why is it here? Well, here's the thing. It's, this journey is almost point for point mimicking Twilight and Team's uh, excursion uh, in yeah. the first episode. <laughs> in, in, in all honesty, Silver, if you didn't mention that, I would have. I wouldn't have noticed. Well, now I have, and you can't unsee it. Yeah, and I, I guess well, uh, there, there's a commenter uh, in the YouTube stating that uh, season ten has its problems, and I'm guessing. This is one of them. Hey, boy, no spoilers, but mm -hmm. this rep this particular repetition is not an issue later on. The, not every team, hashtag not all teams, goes through the exact same point-for-point -point journey. I was seeing the parallels. The Groot slang is as malicious as Nightmare Moon, not quite as vocal or melodramatic, uh, but The Rock needing help is just like Steven Magnet, who ironically mm -hmm. made an appearance la uh, in the first issue. And the musical number is just like Giggle at the Ghosties, only with yes, greater yes. visual flair. <laughs> so a lot of this is feeling like, okay, are we, we're both honoring the original main six's journey and, and emphasizing that these, fo that these are inheritors to the same idea. Peers, equals. I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. But if it's too similar, it starts to feel like, okay, now... You're just retelling me season one, but with different characters. Mm, true, true. When we read the Journal of the Two Sisters, they featured a lot of stories that were basically taking stories from the main six and splicing them together. Uh, case in point, they're rescuing the crystal heart from a dragon as Princess Amore was suffering from his absence. A little bit of the Crystal Empire combined with dragon shy and the mm. idea i think there is to show how the main six are walking in the same hoof prints as the princesses that their journeys are more similar it's it's a parallel thing but i think th this is so point for point it's starting to become less homage and more repetition the best aspect i think is the again the flashback at the beginning to their role to their role playing mm -hmm. because that shows how as kids they were a bit more dysfunctional twilight in some ways lucked out that she met all her friends when they were older a little bit more secure in who they were more mature they wouldn't have been able to make that journey if they had been younger like even just a little bit older than the cmc no this was a trek for older ponies just as this trek is succeeding better because the characters are more mature. And at the same time, too, uh, if you didn't point out the similarities to Season 1, Episode 1 and 2, I wouldn't have noticed it. And it's one of those cases where, oh, this is great, this is interesting, I like the visuals, I like the story, I like where this is going. And I, I think the defining factor is that we had seniors on the group where, yes, uh, Applejack is considered to be, well one of the bearers of the elements and whatnot. And we had, what, Rockhoof and uh, Tempest here uh, throwing down and having some action. So we, we do see that, okay, uh, the tempo, the similarity stopped there. And it, it was kind of fun because well, uh, in Friendship is Magic, we didn't really see a throwdown between the, what, uh, between Nightmare Moon and the ponies. So yeah, that that's something different there, and also I think there's a uh, time saver, so we didn't really get the full, uh, what you call this, similarities. So yeah, 
anywho, uh, I'm going to carry on to the final episode or final issue for this story, uh, issue 92, uh, episode 4. So we start off with the <coughs> ponies, or we, sorry, uh, we start off with the Groot Slag, uh, stalking and trying to attack Tempest and Rockhove. But, uh, Rockhove got a few good hints in and they just throw down, hitting, uh, just getting back up and fighting. So yes, uh, in the temple, we see Applejack and Sakura just aghast at what they're seeing because, wait, how is this possible? Why is this here? What, 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 what's going on? Like what? Uh, but the Frisian ponies that are local to Frisia are just saying like, okay, um, what are we seeing? Why, why are you guys shocked? Like, what, 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 what? so Mirari just says, okay, uh, anyway, uh, you investigate the tree and whatnot. I and we try to find some answers in this place. So, uh, I'm going to speed things up a bit. Uh, Brooke sees a well and investigates the well. Uh, Dusty sees some kind of wall painting or wall carving and sees stuff. We do see stuff too. And is this chaos, Silver? Well, let's see here. Uh, oh gosh, what was her, her name? Yeah, her name was Chaos, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I just realized that that is Chaos. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, we see him Cosmos. Traveling. That's what her name. Oh, Cosmos. Cosmos. Sorry, my, my bad. So anyway, uh, we see Dusty traveling around and seeing that. Hey, uh, what is this? There's this thing with lights. Mm, I don't get it. And then, uh, they see some kind of bath, and then like as Dusty reports back, um, they didn't, they couldn't find anything. The place is big, but it doesn't have much in there. Uh, the fighting seems to be going all out. And Applejack just says, oh, I'm going to help uh, the guys outside. You guys try and figure something out. Uh, as that is going on, Zakura asks uh, Mirari if she hears any voices. And she says she does. No, uh, Mirari says no, but Zakura says she does. Like whispers calling to her to come nearer and whatnot. As Zakura was about to touch the tree... Mirari stops her. There's going to be a pin there. And we carry on with Applejack. As she goes out, she sees that, oh my god, uh, the fight is not going well. And Rockhoof gives the Groot like a nice one-two to the head. And it crashes to one of the, the temple. And, <laughs> um, well, let's just say that Mirari couldn't stop Zukura from, well, bonking her head on the tree. <laughs> oh, boys. So, as that happens, we see a flashback or kind of the mind thing that uh, Princess Celestia did. But instead of Celestia, it's the prince. Oh. So, the prince tells Zakura that you've been, okay, uh, you're kind of the chosen one. Here's the reason why, blah, blah, blah. And you know what to do. Good luck. So when Zakura wakes up, she says, Okay, guys, I know what to do. And it's similar to what happened in Equestria. So you guys need to stand on this position. Look, that's your cutie mark, right? Okay, stand on your cutie marks and somehow get power. Uh, Applejack kind of explains things like, uh, Okay, what's this? Uh, Rose, your generosity... Mirari, your uh, honesty, Dusty, your kindness, and uh, Melody is laughter, and Crystal is loyalty, and last but not least is Sakura, you are magic. And with that, they get slammed with the, uh, well, elements of harmony, and they became the, well, power ponies, yay! <laughs> And they, well, get their powers and whatnot. And Applejack says, been there, done that. <laughs> Show off. As they get their powers, 
uh, the good slide bashes into the temple and the ponies or well the Frisian ponies power up and just gives an ultimatum to the group slag saying that uh, we do not wish to destroy you but my friends and I will defend our home we ask that you help us find a peaceful option but if you refuse and well the group slag says no and they well <laughs> this 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 is their equivalent of rainbow blast um somehow it change into something I don't know and well uh, the monster is defeated yay should I stop here carry on silver let's carry on we've only got a den wall okay so with that uh, the group side is defeated and Applejack writes a letter to Twilight <laughs> uh, long story short uh, they witnessed some really awesome things with the tree and whatnot and it's really awesome and with the defeat of the group stack the water came flowing back uh Zakura's relationship with her friends is better and prince gave some really good goodies to uh the equestrian ambassador for their help in the problem uh rock hoof here managed to find a bunch of kids that never heard his stories and decides to tell them, oh god. But with them going back, they have to leave something behind. And that's uh, Zakura. And, well, uh, expect to have a lot of, what you call this, stories or reports from Zakura reporting back in to find out what's going on. <clears throat> and... As the comic comes to a close, we see that the lighting is activated. There's a second one and there's a mysterious voice. Uh, it says, it can't be, it's been a thousand years or it's been a thousand of years. I have to tell the commander and comic ends. So, Silver, what do you think? Oh, there's much going on here. So, first off, Rock Hoof up until this point, he's been the lovable goof. He's just been big, burly hugs and spine-breaking and, and <laughs> stating the obvious. You kind of forget the dude's a fighter. It's fun to see him as eager for a brawl as Tempest. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and he, he even says it like, um, uh, where's that line? Where's that line? Like... Uh, Oh man, I, 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 it could be in the previous comic, but yeah, he he just says like I'm itching for a fight and whatnot. Like he, I, I always know that I'm a uh, knight or something. Like that. Okay, uh, you know it's been nice having friends and all, but I've always believed the true Rokuf was a warrior, uh, and this is where I belong on the battlefield. So yeah, that that's pretty cool. And yeah, uh, he w when he's in the fighting stance. His expression changed, and like he's yeah, he's up for battle. Rawr. I might spoil this much. No one else communicates with the spirit of the tree thus far in the comics. This is something very unique reserved for Sakura, and I think that it really highlights. You feel a sense of triumph when she becomes the element of magic, something she's wanted all her life. Mm -hmm. Even training, helping train Twilight. Uh, I remember Lauren Faust wanted Zakur to be like a second mentor to Twilight. That's true, and, that's true. and so, but now here's Zakura. She helped Twilight learn focus and, and discipline. Now Zakura has learned a few things about friendship. So it's a nice closing of the circle. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that moment and the look on her face, how happy she is. Yeah, I, I, I shed a tear that moment, man, because, like, uh, I, I guess this is uh, one of those things where we got to see her backstory and whatnot, so that helps a lot. But, like, she spent all this time wanting to be magical and whatnot and suffered through a lot of emotional turmoil. And in the end, she got her wish. But, that's not really what made the whole experience great for her. 
uh, what's great is that she got to reconnect with her friends back and uh, that's worth all the magic in the world. And I'm betting the Groot slang could use a few extra friends right now. He's like, hey, hey, wait a minute. Aren't I supposed to turn good? <laughs> Actually, that, that would be if he's incredibly meta. No, instead of a redemption like Princess Luna enjoyed, Groot slang dead. Yeah. Straight up dead. But, but, but here's the thing, like, um, with Nightmare Moon, it was kind of uh, the thing where, okay, you are a pony with uh, thinking and whatnot, so we bless you with Rainbow Blast, and somehow you became Princess Lulu. And with this one, the Groot Slag doesn't seem nice or anything. Like, given the option to be well given the option to find a peaceful resolution he says his like he's just what do you call this um feral yes well I, we don't get into the mythology too much with the Groot slang also Norman I really have to emphasize it's slang rather than S-L-A-G you're going to offend your British viewers slang <laughs> oh no Groot slang but S-L-A-G is a slang. kind of a naughty word. The Dinobots of Transformers ha- had to be censored. In, really? Uh, slag in, is in bad? Br- it is bad. It is, uh, I believe it has to do with bodily fluids over there. Really? Huh? And it, ain't the world weird? I mean, over here it just means melted metal. I know. <clears throat> but over there it's something else. But the Groot slang, which, oh. here's the thing I wonder. I mean, you're right, There's there's no... It's not a, a, a corrupted or deceived. It really is just a bad creature. Though I kind of wonder, in the last panel w- where it says, Dear Princess Twilight, mm-hmm. it goes poof, and there's a little stone that drops. Yeah, yeah. Did they just transamorgify the the uh, Groot slang into a pebble? Possibly. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you read further than me, so probably you... Got more info? I, I I don't know. Oh, they haven't revisited this creature. Anything more I know at this point will be is just teasers for upcoming issues. Mm, but I do find this comic kind of fascinating. Okay, once you get the idea of what's going on, and you when you see certain things like oh, uh, in the pool there is a picture of a globe with the tree of harmony, and there's what four of them, and. Uh, what we know of, there's one in Equestria, one in Phrygia, and there's two more. Uh, I'm guessing in the Griffin Empire and also the Diamond Dogs, probably. Well, there's three more. Ah, yes. Because uh, of the counter there, there are three more? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, ah, man. This is, this is too... This is one of those things that I'm confused because okay, we see a counter, we, we see a what um light thingy. Okay, at first there's one, so I was confused. Why, why is that there? Could it be because of Applejack? Could it be because of Sakura? Because reasons? But no, no, no. Uh, it's indication of the activation of the Harmony Tree. So there's two now, and there's three more. So, yeah, there's something fascinating to find out. Okay, cool. But the new bad guy here, what is it? Well, new guys, we don't really know a whole lot. Just that someone is startled by the activation of another temple after thousands of years. Meanwhile, Apple Bloom's going to be a little cross. I mean, they're, Applejack's coming home with loads of stuff. But that means everyone gets a souvenir. Apple Bloom has fewer ba- bragging rights. But at the same time, too, she's going to miss her friend. Yes, this is something of a send-off to Sakura. Yeah, and honestly, this made me shed a tear because Sakura and... Uh, and Sakura's part of Ponyville, so having her leave is kind of sad, but it's understandable why, because now she's a element of harmony for uh, Parisia. So her place is there. And honestly, it's sad that she had to go. But it's very emotional. And if you're a fan of Sakura, this really hits you hard. But at the same time too, the show never really used her, so <laughs> there's no difference. Ah, 
I guess one last thing is that uh, Andy Price and his references, uh, as always, are fun. You see the room where this mysterious voice uh, is talking about how it's been thousands of years. There's a bat phone right next to the globe. Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know this. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that took me a bit. But, yeah. Um, what is this? Like, uh, in any future comic, do they show anything about this, Silver? Well, it, it it's a recurring theme. I know the name of this organization, but not what they look like. In fact, that statue, that statue holding down the Desert Temple scroll makes me wonder if that is what they will look like. Or is that some sort of deatific being? Yeah, I mean, oh, this is one of those things where I want to know more. Like, I, I want to keep reading because this is very fascinating. Like, we, we finally get a quote-unquote villain or antagonist for the show. But we don't really know how they look. We don't really know what they are. And the statue that we get is like, what is this? Are they some kind of winged beast or stuff? What are they? What is going on? <laughs> There's a lot to go through here. And, oh man, like, uh, I do wish we had season 10 in cartoon form. Seriously. Hey, we have our imaginations and potential. Better to have a story in, in print than not at all, I say. Yeah, true, true. It's one of those cases where better to have than nothing. Exactly. So. Yep. So, um, uh, did we go to final thoughts? Not yet. Ah, all right. All right, then. Uh, Silver, final thoughts? <laughs> well, I enjoyed this premiere it's it's the equivalent of a two-part episode it's the start of twilight's reign and a farewell to sakura and an expansion of the world it tackled a lot it did a lot and i really enjoyed it the only thing that really brings me down is that when i realize hey wait a minute this is mirroring equestria perhaps too much the far asian shore needs its own identity and sometimes it borrows too heavily from equestria Unfortunately, to, we need more time to expand on that. And so, it's up to folks' imagination to flesh out this world. Yeah, I totally agree on you there. But I, I don't know. I mean, to me, personally, I, I feel like uh, Farisia has its own uh, thing that's going on for them. And it's, it's not similar to Ponyville or Equestria, but it has its own charm. Like, I, I, I know what you mean by it being similar, but I don't think it's that similar that it's one of the same. Uh, in terms of story, yes, uh, the beats are almost the same. And if you didn't point it out to me, I wouldn't have noticed. So that's a good thing, probably, right? Yes. So... Uh, we shall see. Hmm, yeah. So other than that, I, I do love the whole story about Sakura just getting what she wanted and technically she worked for it like she worked for it for so long and in the end what she needed was friendship to wrap it all up now we just need princess Zakura. <laughs> oh boy if she becomes a zebra corn alice zebra and alabra <laughs> oh there we go alabra i like oh that. no i don't want to learn that in school come on what she can she can have like the long legs of an abada and like a watery parts like a kelpie, and there she'll be in. Oh, oh, oh I, I thought you was, I thought you were saying algebra. <laughs> well, I'm, I seem to have gone with several terms, but point stands. <laughs> okay, um, with that, I I think we come to an end. So, well, I you know what? Honestly, I got no idea what we're going to do for next week. So we'll just have to wait and see. Let's just, let us, let it be a surprise. Let's let it be a surprise. So, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshowgmail.com. Uh, you can reach us all on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, seek, seek me out in many corners of the interwebs. Uh, on Twitter and DeviantArt, I post under MLP Silver Quill, and you can find Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics, background resources, and all of my, and my general tomfoolery. Plus, Gift Wars! 
I love a good gift war. Then I post comic reviews on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays when a new comic comes out. I will say Diamond Comics made that confusing for a while, but we're getting back on track. Uh, let's see here. I do Fulfillment Fridays where I stream and do artwork on my channel. And also I'm working towards my next video. So give a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill. You shall find me and I shall have new things to show. So Silver, your Fulfillment Friday, if I understand right, you stream on two places, which is YouTube and also Twitch? Uh, Twitch, yes. yes. Yes, thanks to the power of a website called Restream. It splits yeah. my signal between two locations. YouTube is the more more popular, think, more yeah. aware. Mm -hmm. But there's also a Twitch under MLP Silver Quill. Ah, all right. So your Twitch account name is MLP Silver Quill. Yes. All one word or dash? Let's see here. I think it's MLP Silver Dash Quill. Ah, all I right. To, had, I had to get a little creative because it was all everything was taken. <laughs> How? Are there imposters out there? There's an entire, there's a writing group called Silver Quill that they actually uh, give an award. I feel kind of bad if I take focus away from that. And then Magic the Gathering put, makes a whole college named Silver Quill, and I don't see one buck in royalties. Where's the sense in that? Did I, I point it out to you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did I point it out to you, Silver? Like, hey, Silver, well, look at this. I got a deluge of point out. So everyone's like, oh, Silver Quill, you have a college. Wait, I have a college? Yeah, yeah, but it's named for a dragon. Oh, there's a dragon named Silver Quill. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I pointed it out at first. Then, like, everybody. And then, like, you know what, Silver? Uh, when, when buying one of the Commander Precons, I, I bought the Silver Quill one just because of you. <laughs> I appreciate that. They owe me for sales then. <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> Probably. Curse really? you, Wizards of the Coast! Give me monies. <laughs> uh man, they 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 won't do that. Uh, they, what they can do is just give you in cards. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> but anyway, um, also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stay tuned. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on funnylive dot com. Links will be in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. So season 10 episode 1 and 2 is done. Wait, 1, 2 and 2. Oh god, I can never get that straight. Ah, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think it's two episodes, two comic issues is one episode. Yep. But the numbering is 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> so, so it's four issues, two episodes. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Oh man. Still, I can't wait to go on. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah.